Greetings. In this video, uh, we're going to be focusing on the mechanism which raises and lowers the head and the way that that interfaces with this potentiometer on the plate on the back. I noted in a video earlier that if the control belt, which is what I'm calling this belt here, is missing, um, you'll hear a buzzing noise when the unit's first turned on because this uh, is going to rotate at full tilt. The reason for that is this potentiometer is uh, acting as a sensor and the control board is waiting for a specific, well, it's maybe not resistance, it'll be a voltage that it'll be reading, uh, which is going to signify that the heads are in the lowest position. Because if you look, uh, what this motor is doing is actually turning this pulley, which is turning this black gear here. And then if I just turn this by hand, you can see that that is uh, lowering and raising the head between here, where the heads are touching the magnetic tape inside the cassette shell, and the pinch roller has raised to touch the cap stand, and thus the tape is being drawn from left to right at a consistent speed. And then at the lowest point, you know, there, then we would be able to remove the cassette easily. So that's stop mode. So when the unit boots up, that control motor is turning until a resistance is received that tells the control board, I am at the lowest point in this head array and pinch rollers travel. So that depends on this giving the correct reading. If I just take this final screw out, you can see I've already removed two. There's one off to the side that's already been covered in that a previous video. Unwind this cable tie. And uh, what you're about to see here is a modified part, uh, not modified by me, but by someone else. There's this white cap on the potentiometer. Under normal conditions, that would just be solid white plastic. And so that grips this part of the black gear here via that ridge. So in order for that mechanism to work, it's essential for one thing that that white plastic part does create a sort of solid interface between this potentiometer and the black gear below it. And for another thing, the relationship between this white plastic part and that potentiometer needs to be correct. So if that is snapped altogether, what will happen is the motor will turn this continuously and uh, you'll see the heads go up and down and up and down. And usually what happens is, and that's what's happened on this original part here, those white plastic lips have broken. Let me show you what would happen if the belt was intact, but uh, this clip was broken. When I first turn on, I'm gonna turn. It just does it forever and ever. So if we were to look at the front of that, what you would see then is the heads going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down uh, because the control board never receives the resistance it wants in order for this to come to a halt because this pot and this black gear aren't connected. Now, what the owner of this, this is in for repair, he's got so far and then sent it to me to finish the repair. Um, he's put a bit of metal, punched it through there and that was working for a bit, but it's actually bent while I was uh, working on it. What I usually do is I would get the rotating cutting tool on a Dremel style drill. I don't actually own a Dremel. And then cut two slots in a guitar volume control. Because if you take a volume control for a Stratocaster is a, a good height, then that will give you the correct interface. I think I've got a reel up on my Instagram account where I show a pot for a guitar pedal being used in the same way. And um, the guitar pedal pot's not as deep, so I had to use a couple of plastic washers underneath to make sure that that was a tight fit. What I'm actually gonna be doing today though, is I've been donated this uh, 3D printed part by a viewer. Um, his name's Greg. And I think he's going to be selling these on UK eBay. Now, I asked him for a link and he hasn't got back to me. But maybe later I'll add that in a pinned comment or something if you want to buy one of those off him. One other thing I want to show you about this. I'm more impressed with this, really, than I am with the 3D printed part. This is you make, he's made a little 3D printed box for it. Look at that. Look at that. How cute. And another thing I want to say about that 3D printed part. Let's say the guy who's making the disappears in the same way that the guy who was making aluminium base plates for the Porter One. What I don't want is viewers petty camping in my DMs for years afterwards. You know, you promised me an aluminium base plate. Entitled, poor me way. I'm not making these, I'm not promising them to you. I'm doing a favor to the person who gave me this part for free. 
it may be that that person can't be bothered to make them anymore or dies suddenly, in which case you'll need to find another solution. I'm not responsible if you can't get this part in the future. The orientation of this white plastic part to the pot is very important. And for a long time, what I've been referring to is a set of photos that was made by a guy called Mike Z and it's on a blog called Dr. Z's Workshop. But there've been a few times when I've followed the instructions, which I can't remember whether he says, I think it must be, yeah, turn that pot fully counterclockwise so that this arm points at this hole in the metal plate. There have been a couple of times where I felt like I did that correctly. And when I put the unit back together again, it wasn't right. Rather than the heads coming to rest in the lowest position, they would come to rest in the middle position or the highest position. First few times it happened, I thought, oh, it's my imagination, human error, I've got confused. Um, but then it happened a few more times and then a few viewers have been in touch and said that they tried to follow those instructions and it didn't work. And I think there must be a point in the manufacturing process where they started to use a different value of pot. I don't know, talking out of my hat, but for some reason, it doesn't always work. So what I'm gonna to do today is use a slightly different method to establish the correct relationship between this white clip and the pot below it. At a certain point, we want that control motor to come to a stop. When it comes to the stop, should correspond to wherever this is for the lowest point in the head. So if I rotate that white pulley now, it's about there. That means that the this should be kind of at right angles. So what I'm suggesting we do with the control belt off, so that's going and spinning, and then we turn this by hand with the clip off until we reach a point on the pot where we get the control motor to stay still. Once we found that point, then we slot our adapted guitar volume control or our beautifully 3D printed replacement part from Greg onto here such that it lines up with this position of the black gear. Then if we tighten it on like that and boot up again and uh, obviously re replace the control belt as well, then it should be that when the unit is first booted on, the head defaults to the lowest position, which is correct. Okay, so everything is plugged in electrically, except the record and playback head, which is unnecessary for this, but I haven't actually bothered to screw this into the chassis. But if I just reach under here and turn it on, at a certain point in the middle, you can probably hear, maybe even see, it's come to a stop. So too far one way, it buzzes. Too far the other, it buzzes. There's a sweet spot in the middle where it's almost at a dead standstill. There we go, I've got it to stop there. And that should correspond to about here. That's uh, roughly where the lowest point in the travel of the heads are. Now I want that bit to stick off to the side. Stay still again. Oh, what's happened? Is this the bad connection here? I might have a bad solder point. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, one of the risks here is you do put some strain on these wires, so I'll resolder that in a minute. But anyway, I want that to stick out there. Ish. Yeah, so that when that's almost at 90 degrees, it's coming more or less to the standstill. And by the way, there is a trim pot on the control B board. So I will put up something on the display to tell you what these three do. One of them's like clearance of the pinch roller for pause. One of them's to do with brake clearance on the wheels on the other side, but one of them is a fine tune trimmer. So as long as this is just about 90 degrees, that red wire's come off completely there. If that red wire hadn't just broken, it being roughly at that position would mean that it's at the stop and we could push that down and then adjust the trim pot and it'll work. So let me come back once I fix that red wire and everything's back in. So it's you know, pointing almost immediately due east to the right. Plug this in, turn this on. I try and move it elsewhere. The control motor moves it to a different back to that position. Okay, it's difficult for me to show you, but the head is in roughly the lowest position there, okay? 